Maybe you can share some of the ways that you see successful women planning for their long-term financial independence with you and, and as well as those who maybe aren't using an advisor yet, but try to do it themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, first and foremost, I'm a big believer that, you know, money can't buy happiness, but it can help you do all the things you want to do. So until you've really taken some time to figure out what is valuable to you and what your goals are, you know, you're trying to just throw darts. You know, I, I just think, you know, the first step really is doing a values exercise, figure out what it is you value most, and then aligning those goals with your financial goals. And so, you know, for some people, it's creating a vision board where they actually can see it. So when you are faced with spending now versus saving towards a goal, look at your vision board, look at that picture of the beach house you are hoping to buy in a few years, it will help you, you know, uh, forego now for later. So step one really would be doing that values and goals assessment. Number two, review your inflows and outflows. Make sure that your cash flow is aligning with those goals and values. Um, you know, if you don't have excess cash flow to work with, then you should probably, you know, look over the last three to six months of your bank statements, your credit card statements, and figure out what expenses do you have that are not aligned with your goals that you could potentially cut? So that would really be step one. But if you're fortunate enough to have that excess cash flow that we talked about earlier, the really, really the way to do that is to prioritize what are your main focus, you know, what are your goals that you're aiming for, and then making sure that you align your um, extra savings towards those. I know something you've talked about a lot is reverse budgeting, and that's something, you know, that I think it's much more palatable than true budgeting. So the concept is really, let's see, let's focus your savings. Like as long as you're hitting your savings goals and they're where they need to be for your long-term goals, then whatever's left, you can spend however you want to. You don't need to be looking at the nitty gritty details of how much is going towards eating out versus, um, you know, transportation, whatever. It doesn't matter as long as you're hitting those savings goals. So I think Figuring out what those goals are, then making sure your cash aligns to those goals is, you know, it's pretty intuitive, but you wouldn't believe the number of people that come in like, I don't know, I'm just kind of saving just to save. And um, so helping them really get, you know, clearer on what those should be is, is really important. Just like the example of the client who decided they really wanted to pay off their house. That was something really important to them. Uh, you can't just go by rules of thumb, which would have suggested that's not a good idea. So... Um, thirdly would be investing. So investing and staying disciplined. I mean, there's a lot of research that shows women tend to be less risky. I've also seen research that contradicts that. So bottom line is, though, if you've got goals that you're planning for that are, you know, let's just say 10 years or more out, you should have the vast majority of that invested for the long run. And I know you talk lots about, you know, having just a very low cost, well diversified plan, it does not need to be anything complicated. I think that's another obstacle, especially women face it's like, man, it's so overwhelming, I have no idea. It doesn't need to be complicated, something very simple and just sticking with that plan you know, I've seen it so many times, that is the key to success is letting it go. But it's hard, especially right now in this day and age where there's social media, there's, you know, shows are telling you what to buy. Well, oh, no, we're gonna have a stock market crash. It's hard to filter that out, put on the blinders and just focus on your plan. <laughs> I know you talk a lot about that too. So like NVIDIA, you know, it's hard to not think about, gosh, if I would have put all my money in NVIDIA, look where it would be today, and I could probably retire. If you get you can get caught in that all day long. <laughs> so, you know, again, just focusing on what you can control and that your plan is in place and just going back to that over and over during those moments is really important. And then I'd also say, you know, preparing for worst case scenario, like especially as a breadwinner, winner, you need to have life insurance. You need to have potentially have disability insurance. I mean, those are just things, especially when you're the one who, with a family depending on you that you need to make sure you have and making sure you have estate documents in place and that you're reevaluating those on a regular basis. So those are all things that we, you know, that I'm doing with clients very regularly. 